Hey everyone, what's up? It's Rob Dodson. Welcome to the very first update episode of Polycast. In these videos, I'm going to go back in time and dig up some of our older episodes so I can update them with all the Polymer 1.0 goodness. Today, we are starting with Polycast numero uno, which is on core icons. So I'm going to show you how to work with the new iron icon element. Let's take a look. So today, I'm going to help you convert the previous episode, which worked with the core icon element, to the updated iron icon that is now part of Polymer 1.0. Many of the elements that were previously in the core set have now been ported to either the iron set or the paper set. And the general rule of thumb that I like to keep in my head is if the previous element was mostly just behavior, then it has probably been moved to the iron element set. If it had a bit of UI to it, like perhaps the, uh, the core toolbar or the core header panel, anything that's sort of visual, then it has been moved to the paper element set. So we're going to be working with Iron Icon today. The first thing we're going to do is go over to the catalog at elements.polymerproject.org and go and click on the Iron Element set to get the documentation. And I'll just find the docs for the Iron Icon element inside of here. And you'll notice that if you've watched the previous episode, a lot of these things are the same from before. right? We've still got a, a source attribute if you're working uh, with sources. If you are working directly with an icon, there is still the icon attribute. So many of the things are, are similar from the previous video. The, uh, the one thing that I do want to point out here is a little bit further down the page, you'll see a section on styling. And this is going to mention styling using custom properties. Now, if you're not familiar with custom properties, we covered those in a previous episode. So if you go check out this episode, it will explain how custom properties work. I recommend you go and watch that before uh, watching the rest of this episode, because we're going to use these in a little bit. OK, now to install these in my application, I'm going to hop open to my terminal, and I will run Bower install, save. And you'll notice here that I'm installing from Polymer Elements slash Iron Icons. All of the Polymer element sets or whatever now live in this Polymer Elements org on GitHub. So anytime you're Bower installing, you're doing it from Polymer Elements. And that's going to go out and fetch the repo, download it to my application. So I'm ready to rock. Now, if I open my project up in Sublime, I've actually got the old project from the, the old episode. And we're going to go through and update this. So I open up my Bower components directory. And you'll see that inside of here, we've got both the iron icon element as well as the iron icons element. So by installing iron icons, I got iron icon for free because it depends on it. And next, I'm going to open my index.html file. And scrolling down here, I'm going to replace the old polyfills. These are quite old at this point. So we're going to update them to use Web Components Lite.js. That is the polyfill set we use in Polymer 1.0. And then instead of importing core icons, we will import iron icons. And that is going to import both the default icon set as well as the iron icon element so I can use that default set. Now, the next thing I want to do is go down here to where it says core icon and replace these with my individual iron icons. So I can just go and delete all these. We're going to use the same icon. We'll use that Android icon. But this time, we'll use the iron icon element to do it. So iron icon, icon equals Android, right? Pretty straightforward. I can go boot up a local server. And then I'll zoom in here. And you can see that we've got our Android icon displaying. Uh, so we're all good there. OK, so if you go to the element catalog because you want to add some additional icons to your application, you want to look up what they're called, logically, you're going to go and look for the iron icons element set docs. And what you're going to find is a blank page because there is a bug in the catalog right now. So I know about this little special URL, which is basically you take a demo file from somewhere else in the catalog, and then you just replace the URL with iron icons. And that's actually going to load in the docs for your iron icons for you. It's a total hack. Uh, to make your life easier, I will give you a little annotation here that you can click on. So this will take you right to the icon docs. This is a bug that we're, we have open in the catalog. We're going to get it fixed really soon. If you're watching this in the future, maybe it's already fixed. But if you're watching this today, and you want to read the docs, click that annotation. It'll save you a little bit of a, a headache there. Now, once I hit that URL, I'm going to see the full default element set. So this is everything that I got in my Iron Icons import. And if I scroll down, there are actually other element sets as well that I could use in my application. So here's one called AV for audiovisual icons. And looking around, I can see that this AV snooze icon down here, uh, right about here, Looks pretty neat, right? So maybe I want to use that in my application. 
So I'll, I'll hop back into my project, and you'll see that when I open up the iron icon set, that inside of here, uh, there's a few different icon sets. There are the AV icons. So I just need to import that element set. So I will drop an import after where I pulled in iron icons. And here I'm going to import AV icons. Now all of those icons will be available to me as well. So copy my iron icon and drop in one that says AV colon snooze. And anytime you're using a icon from a set that is not the default set, you're going to need to prefix it with the set name and a colon. Now when I hop back into my editor, you can see I've got my Android icon and I've got my AV snooze icon. Uh, the last thing that I want to do, as you recall, we can style the elements using these custom properties for width and height. So I'm going to hop back into my editor and create a theme.html file. And inside of this file, I'm going to create a custom style property. So style is custom style. And I can treat this kind of like a style sheet. So I'll target the iron icon element. And now I can target the custom properties inside of this. I'm just going to make all iron icons have like a, a really big width and height so that they're <laughs> visible from space, basically. Um, so I've set width and height. I'm going to import my theme file. And now when I go back to my browser and refresh the page, I've got these ginormous icons. So again, it's kind of absurd to make them this big. But you know, this way, you can globally set the size for all of your iron icons. Or you know, if you wanted to target it by class, you can do these different things. And in this case, it's not like a, a, a very huge use of custom properties. But I want to get you familiar with custom properties. I want to get you comfortable using them, because we're going to be using them a lot more in the future. So that about does it. You've now got the latest and greatest info on working with icons in Polymer 1.0. That's it for this week, folks. Be sure to click that little subscribe button. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.